Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see a complete roadmap on how to learn Java development. And I know you guys will have seen a lot of other roadmaps as well. And some of them are good, some of them are okayish, but most of them lack a certain element. So either it's focusing too much on the development part and does not focus on how to get a job, and either it focused on the interview part and does not focus on the development, the project side, etc. So I have this roadmap for you where I have everything right from the scratch. Even if you don't know what Java is right now, or if even if you have a little knowledge right now, all the way to learning everything in Java development, as well as how to apply for a job as a Java developer and get your dream job. So I have everything right here, right from the basics, right from being on a level of zero, of nothing, and going all the way to getting your dream job. So let's get started. So this is how it starts, like. And uh, don't worry, I have this roadmap linked in the description, so you don't need to make notes or anything. Everything will be given to you in the description. You can just take from here. So here's what we're going to do. We I have the goal is to become a Java developer, a proper Java developer, and here's what we're going to do. First thing, obviously, you need to make some good projects. Why making the projects? You'll be having the learning of Java development, like what to do, how does it work, everything. And then afterwards, in the next step, you have placement preparation. Meaning what to do to apply for the job, you know, to get the actual job as a Java developer because that itself is also another tedious task. So we'll go one by one. Let's start with the projects as in what to learn in Java development right from scratch. Okay, so in projects you can make two types of application. One, you can make a standalone application which is more or less a small kind of thing like a personal project which is a little bit less impactful and then you have a distributed application which is having actual industry level architecture and something that you might be doing in a company. So you have these two levels. The first is the initial phase, which is standalone application, and then is the distributed application, which is the second phase. So going to go step by step. Now let's go into standalone application and let's see what you'll be learning there, what you'll be making there. Okay. So step by step, first, obviously you need to learn core Java. You need to know Java to be able to do Java development and in core Java, you'll have multiple things. First thing is that you need to be good with the basic syntax. The second thing is object oriented programming, which is a very important feature of Java, which you need to be good with. And then you have collections, which is the library part of Java, which helps you in coding more effectively. And then you have multi-threading, which is again a very important concept of Java. And then you have exception handling. So these are more or less the most important part of core Java that you need to learn in order to do development in Java. So in Go Java, you need to do all these things. Now, I'll also be giving you resources along the way. And again, the resources will also be mentioned in the description box, so don't worry about that. So for Go Java, you can pick a website like W3Schools or Java T Point or Tutorials Point, and you can learn from a website like that. So these are the main topics or the main features from Java, Go Java that you need to learn. Now, after you finish Go Java, you need to go to the framework. Now, in Java, in backend, mostly in backend, we have uh, like multiple frameworks, but the most in demand framework, the one framework that you absolutely should learn, and the one framework that has the most in demand in the industry, which is the most in demand in the industry, is Spring Boot. So, there's three frameworks or three kinds of technologies that you need to learn. One is Spring Boot, then you have Maven, and then you have Log4j or SLF4j. Log4j or SLF4j helps you in coding better. Now what is Spring Boot? So Spring Boot is a framework basically which helps you as a Java developer. So it has a lot of inbuilt things which can make your job easier. So what I'm going to suggest to you is you start at the basics of Spring Boot. You learn what annotations are, you learn how to make a API call, like a get API call, post API call, and a very good resource I'll suggest to you is Telescope. So Telescope's YouTube channel is a great start for learning Spring Boot if you're a beginner. Apart from Telesco, you can also learn from Code with Durgesh, but his videos are in Hindi. So if you're comfortable with, with Hindi, you can also learn with Code with Durgesh. So start with the basics of Spring Boot. Take it easy, take it slow in the beginning and start small. Build some small application where you have basic API call, REST API call, GET API call, POST API call, DELETE API call, where you're playing around with things. You're just learning things. How does it work? So have a very good basic fundamental idea of Spring Boot. And like I said, you can follow the resources that I mentioned. They'll also be in the description box and go along the way. Now, 
Maven is used along with Spring Boot. So Maven basically handles the dependency part of it. So Maven is also something that you should learn because majority of the times that you will be working with Spring Boot, probably you'll also have Maven. So again, Maven can also be learned with the previous mentioned resources. And again, Log4j, SLF4j is also a dependency that you can learn about, which will help you in coding. If you're talking about backend, we cannot skip databases because a very essential part of the backend is database. How do you connect to database? How do you retrieve the data from the database? How do you write the data to the database? So all of this comes under database connectivity. In database connectivity, you need to learn JDBC, which is nothing but basically Java database connectivity. It's basically a way for your Java application, your Spring Boot application to connect to the database. So you can build something like this. You have a Spring Boot application, you make a GET request to the database and the data is retrieved or you make a create request, a put request or a port request, post request and the data goes to the database. So you can create a standalone application like this where you're connecting with the database. Now, obviously, if you're working with database, then you need to have a good knowledge of the database itself and how to manipulate the database, which comes under SQL. So the three databases I would suggest to you to learn is Oracle SQL, which is the most, obviously the most in demand or in use with Java along with Spring Boot, it is Oracle SQL. Then you have MySQL and you have MongoDB. So you can learn either of these three. What I would suggest is Oracle SQL. So create a standalone application which is able to make basic API calls from your application to the database, connect to the database and just see how things work. So this will be your standalone application. Now, having a standalone application is good for the beginning phase, but you need to have a good knowledge of how distributed applications work because this is the thing that you'll actually be doing in the industry. No one will be asking you to make a standalone application because that is a very basic thing and any beginner or anyone with a good idea will be able to do that. But the game changer is the stuff is the stuff that I have here in the distributed application. This is the thing that you really need to be good with in order to make an impact on the interviewer in order to show them, you know, that you actually are a good Java developer. So let's go into it one by one. Like I said, it will be a little bit more advanced compared to creating the standalone application. So again, first thing here is the core Java. So you can revise whatever I said in the core Java. You have the basic syntax, OOP, collection, multi-threading, exception handling. You can revise them. Then comes microservices. So you might have heard of microservices and it's basically an architecture where you have multiple services which communicate with, with each other and it's basically an architecture which is very much the industry set standard. So it is something that you need to be good with or that you need to know. So what is there in microservices? So there's multiple parts that you need to learn. So you have the architecture, like what is the architecture? How does it work? Then you have Spring Cloud, like how does Spring Cloud work? What is the connection between Spring Boot and Spring Cloud? You need to be good at that. Then you have the API gateway, which is again, how the API calls are working in microservices. And then you have the service discovery, which is about the different services, which make up your microservices. So these are things that you need to be good with. So some of these are a little bit more theoretical. So I would suggest to you to just go on YouTube or just go on Google, not stick to one resource, but to learn about these things as much as you can. So learn about the architecture, learn about what microservices is, why is it beneficial? Why do people use it? Learn as much about it as you can. Then comes communication. So like I said, microservices need to communicate with each other. Your multiple services, they communicate with each other. So for that, you have two things. One is REST, which is again the REST API, the calls that are made between one service. Then you have message broker system, where you have a third party message broker and they help you in basically changing, exchanging the messages between your services. So in message broker, you have multiple things. You have RabbitMQ, you have Apache Kafka, you have ActiveMQ. And in this, the more industry relevant is RabbitMQ or Apache Kafka. So you can easily just, you know, watch a course on YouTube about it to understand how it works. It's not really that difficult. It's just about how two services communicate with each other with the help of a message broker. So these three things you need to have an idea of. But in these, the most important I would say is either RabbitMQ or Apache Kafka, at least have a good knowledge about that, how it communicates, how does it work? Okay, then comes containerization. So now you've created an application you have multiple features, you have multiple services, you have microservices, you have all these things. 
so how will you run it you know you'll not be taking separate jar individual jar for from every module and then uploading it right what you'll be doing is you'll be using a container the container to basically having your entire application and how will you use a container or what will you have in a container you'll basically be using a docker so docker is the one you'll be using you need to have a good idea about docker how it works and then for managing docker what do you have you have kubernetes so these two things you need to have a good idea for the containerization of the application that you're making and a very good resource for this is kunal kushwa's youtube channel and he has some really great content about containerization about docker about kubernetes about how does it work so you can follow kunal kushwa's youtube channel to learn more about these things now for the security because again security confidentiality is also important you need to have a good secure project so the things that you need to learn here is first is spring security which is the features of spring boot or spring itself of how to make it secure so you need to have a good knowledge of spring security then you have jwt and then you have auth 2.0 here i have written auth but it's auth 2.0 that you need to have a good knowledge of so for the security you need to learn about spring security jwt auth 2.0 and how you can implement it in your application based on what your application does how you can implement it to make your application more secure so this is also one thing that you need to have a good knowledge of okay last but not the least comes testing now this is actually very very important uh, especially on industry level so this is something that people generally don't do when they make personal projects they avoid going into testing but obviously when you're in the industry then you have to follow the industry standards meaning you have to test everything like uh, according to the such standards so you need to test every little feature of your application to see whether it's working or not so if you're good with the testing part of it then it will really really make a good impact on the interviewer he will know that you already know how to write industry level code you know without even having any experience so this is something that you sh definitely should work so here you have test ng which is a uh, basically a testing framework it helps you test your uh, work your code like as your mockito which helps you test or run test on your classes your methods your features and then your postman postman is basically a testing tool that you can use for testing your api calls or if you're consuming an api call you can again use postman for your api call so for all of these again you can just follow one of the courses on youtube i think uh, i think free code camp i think free code camp or edureka has a good course on postman and the other two i'll be sure to link them in the description as well and like i said for all of these the resources will be in the description box you don't need to worry about that so after you do all of this and you start implementing things little by little you would have made a proper distributed application using java development using spring boot using the latest technologies that will be sure to impress anyone so there are a few more things but i don't think they are needed right now right now if you're a beginner if you want a job as a fresher or even as a like few years experience then this will pretty much do the job you don't need to go any far than that. now comes placement preparation so this is the thing right even if you do all the development and the work if that's not helping you get a job then you're making a mistake so a goal the goal here is to not only be a good java developer not only learn java development the back end part of it but also to get a job with it right and like i said spring boot is having a lot of good demand right now in the industry so we need to know how to crack the company itself right so the first thing even before i go into it the first thing is to make a good portfolio okay and that's why we had the earlier two parts that you make a good application you make a good project something which is like you know really good unique or something that has some real life value that will be really good if you can make a project like that then half the work is already done so here we have three things we have resume we have dsa and then we have specific interview questions okay so going to resume the most important part of your resume will be the deployed projects like what is the portfolio that you are showing to the interviewer you know what is the portfolio which shows that you have worked on these things so you need to have some good projects that you need to have deployed that you can link to your resume then you need to make sure that your resume is ats friendly i have seen colleagues of mine i've seen friends of mine who are very good at what they do but their resume is not getting selected or their cv gets rejected because they don't have a specific keyword in their resume so you need to make sure that your resume is very ats friendly okay afterwards you need to do dsa 
DSA is not that relevant right now, but still, if you want to go to the top companies, if you want to go to a company like say uh, Wells Fargo, Amazon, or Flipkart, or Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, if you want to go to a company like that, a good product based high paying company, surely a little bit of DSA will be there. So don't need to do too much in DSA. What I suggest is you take the list of uh, any YouTuber like Striver. What I would suggest is you take Striver's sheet, SD sheet, DSA sheet, whatever it is. You go topic by topic. For every topic, this is what you're going to do. You're going to learn the theory of that. For example, if you have linked list, learn the theory of linked list. How does it insert? How does it delete? How does it connect? Afterwards, implementation. So because obviously you've been going forward in Java, you can do the implementation in Java. Implement the particular topic, whether it's a data structure, whether it's an algorithm then solve problems. So solve all the problems from the sheet, like Striver sheet or any other sheet, solve all the problems, make notes, revise before the interview and your DSA should be good enough. Okay. Then comes the interview question. So a lot of times what happens is that even you are good in development, but sometimes the interviewer might ask some question, which, you know, uh, you might get stuck in because you haven't focused more on the theoretical part. So people might know development key. Okay. This is what I need to know. But the moment the interviewer asks you a question, why, that's where people get stuck. So you need to know the why and the how. So you have a little bit of spring theory, spring boot theory. You need to know the annotations. How does the annotations work? You need to know what beans are and you need to know the most important thing, which is inversion of control, dependency injection, 110%. They will ask you one question on inversion of control and dependency injection. Afterward, again, you need to revise on OOP because OOP is also very important. You need to know all the features of OOP, what is OOP, how does it work, and you need to know the theoretical part of it. Most probably with real life examples, you should know this. So this is pretty much a complete thing, I would say, right from the basic, right from the beginning, to become a Java developer, make some project, start with a standalone application, go to distributed applications, and then do the placement prep. Do the project section and the placement section parallelly and then start applying. You can go on LinkedIn, you can go on any other websites. Just look for Java developer roles. There's a lot of openings right now. Don't waste time. Do all of this, start applying and get your dream job. So that's pretty much it. If you have any other doubts, please leave it in the comments. All the links will be in the description box. Do check it out. Thank you.